Hello everyone and welcome to round 12 of the Tadasil Chess Tournament in Vikenze, the Netherlands. In this video we'll have a look at the game between Fabiano, Canor Fa yeah. Fabiano Caruana and Magnus Carlsen. Now these two players have a lot of history. They played a World Chess Championship match in 2018 which, in which they drew all of their classical games but Magnus won the rapid tiebreaker. Anyway, let's have a look at what happened in this game. So Fabiano opened up with the move 1e4, really his bread and butter and Magnus responded with c5. Knight f3, knight c6, and Fabiano played bishop e5. This is called the Rosso Limo attack. Now, in the World Championship match in 2018, Fabiano really tried to go after Magnus in what's called the Sveshnikov. And they had, a, they had a lot of interesting games here, mainly with the move knight d5. All very, very sharp stuff. In the beginning, Magnus played the move knight b8, but then he switched to knight e, uh, knight e7, which really became uh, the main line uh, ever since that match. Anyway, Fabiano played bishop b5, the Rosolimo, Magnus goes g6, and here the main line had always been bishop takes c6. Black usually takes with the d-pawn, even though taking with the b-pawn is also fairly playable. And then, you know, a, a long strategic fight emerges. Anyway, uh, Fabiano castles, Magnus goes bishop g7, and Fabiano goes c3, trying to build a big pawn center here in the center. Big son, big Big pawn center in the center with d4. All right, anyway, Magnus goes knight f6, hitting the pawn on e4. Fabiano goes rook e1, castles d4, and Magnus strikes with d5. All right, so after e5, knight e4, black has a nice knight here on e4. The downside, however, is that this bishop on g7, bishop on g7, is now a bit blocked in by the pawns on e5 and d4. So Fabiano goes bishop e3, reinforcing the center, takes stakes, Queen b6 by Magnus hitting the bishop and eventually maybe putting some pressure on the white center. Queen e2 by Fabiano and bishop d7. Now here things are a bit tricky. If white plays move like let's say, let's say h3, black suddenly has the tactic knight takes e5. And the problem for white is if you take an e5, your bishop on b5 is hanging. And if you take the bishop on d7, white, uh, black's going to recapture with the knight. And suddenly black wins a pawn. So that is why Fabiano played bishop a4. And now knight takes c5 doesn't work because black has uh, white has pawn takes c5 and hitting the queen. With the bishop on b5, black could take. All right, so rook a c8 by Magnus improving his position. Knight c3 by Fabiano, trading off the active knight, and Magnus takes. And white is turning stuff like rook a b1, so Magnus goes queen to d8. Now once again, knight takes e5 is a threat. Like let's say white goes here, knight takes c5. Although I mean maybe in this position not really because after takes. There's rook takes b7, white gets active. But I mean, that's definitely a plan for black. Which is why uh, Fabiano goes bishop b3. Hitting the pawn on d5. So Magnus goes uh, bishop uh, knight a5. And simultaneously, he's hitting the pawn on c3. So Fabiano goes rook a c1 and f. And then we see this trade. So very interesting position. Black has the two bishops. But once again, this bishop on g7 is still a bit blocked in. White also has a big center. And... Besides, black also can create a potential outside uh, pass pawn here with a5, b5, and a4. Anyway, Magnus goes queen b6, hitting the pawn on b3. Fabiano goes queen a2 and a5. So he's already expanding a little bit on the queen side. Queen a3 by Fabiano, but I feel like this move really helped Magnus. Because Magnus played the move rook f8, which is a move he wants to make anyway. He's defending the pawn. And now he's going to try to solve this problem with the bishop on g7 by going e6 and bishop f8, activating the bishop that way. So Fabiano wants to do something quickly. He goes c4, striking in the center. Magnus trades and goes queen a6. And solving this pawn on c4 is a bit difficult to, to protect. I mean, why does his big pawn structure, a uh, big pawn center? But, it's a, but he has to solve that problem first. If he goes knight e2, Magnus is going to play b5. And now white has a tough decision to make. If he takes... Now he has sort of a hole on d5, and his pawn structure is not really mobile anymore. And if you go c5, well then black gets two strong pass pawns on the queen side over here. So Fabiano goes c5 right away. Magnus goes bishop c6, activating the bishop. Rook b1 by Fabiano. And now Magnus could trade on f3 to ruin white's pawn structure and the white king. But this wouldn't really help black, because now the pawn on b7 is a real weakness. And, uh, I mean, white's always pretty safe. White goes king g2 and really defends everything over there. 
So uh, Magnus goes a4, because this bishop is really important. It's defending the pawn on a4. It's also defending this pawn on b7. Rook c1 by Fabiano, and now rook c1, rook cd8 by Magnus. Okay, so Fabiano goes knight d2, trying to activate the knight. And here Magnus plays queen e2. And things are not so easy for Fabiano. If he goes knight c4, suddenly there's queen g4. And this pawn is actually very difficult to protect. I mean, g3 is not a move you want to make. You get destroyed on all the light squares over here. And I mean, f3, black can take this pawn and the problems just don't disappear for white. So that is why Fabiano played f3 first. But now Magnus came up with an amazing move. He played the move, rook takes d4. And you might be wondering, like, wait, what? Isn't he just giving up the exchange? Well, he is. But the problem is for white that uh, white doesn't have any ideas here. Suddenly, both these pawns are weak. And even though black's down in exchange, he has this very strong passed A pawn. This bishop on C6 is just defending everything. And white just doesn't have any plans. So, very instructive exchange sacrifice here by Magnus. Once again, he only gets one pawn, but he senses that there's no way for white to improve his position. And he himself can slowly improve. So, let's have a look at how he did so. So, rook d1 by Fabiano, queen f4. Queen b4 and e6, just fixing this pawn on e5. And now Fabiano should maybe have played a move like rook e1, defending this pawn. But here Magnus can play a move like rook e8, trying to go a3. And he can also always go moves like h5, h4. And once again, white really is lacking any sort of plans here. Um, so Fabiano played bishop c3, but now Magnus played queen takes b4. And white is a tough decision to make here. If you take with the rook, there's going to be bishop f8. And suddenly this pawn on c5 is very difficult to protect. If you go rook to c4, bishop b5, your rook has to move and you lose this pawn. And I mean, if you go bishop d4, rook d8, you're also in a very tough spot. I mean, there's threats all over the place. So Fabiano took with the bishop, but now he hangs a pawn on e5. And look at these bishops. These bishops are really controlling the entire board. Right? Wooden shield, as Hikaru would say it. Um, bishop a3 by Fabiano, and Magnus goes bishop f6. And slowly but surely, he's improving the position. This bishop now is hitting the pawn on um, c5, knight b6, uh, rook b6 by Fabiano, and rook c8. Rook to d2 and f6. He wants to go e5 and bring the king up as well. So f4 by Fabiano, e5. You see trading now. Magnus also has a passed e pawn. Once again, there's no hurry. He has two pawns for the exchange. And once again, these two bishops are just very, very strong. And there's nothing white can do. Everything is protected in a black position. Rook e2, rook f8 check. King e1 and rook f5. He wants to go e4 and hit this pawn on c5. And know that he is not giving Fabiano the chance to sacrifice the exchange. If Magnus would play e4, this would be a big mistake. Fabiano would happily sacrifice the exchange to, hit, to get the pawn back on e4. And now he's likely also going to get the pawn on a4. Which is why Magnus goes rook f5 first, rook b1, and only now e4, hitting the pawn on c5. Rook c1, but now all of white's pieces are passive. Bishop h4 check, g3, and bishop g5. Know that he has now created a weakness in the white position. He can use the f3 square to infiltrate with his rook. Rook b1, rook f3, bishop c1. And of course, he doesn't want to trade the bishops. The bishop pair is really his main strength. Because this bishop is controlling all the light squares and this bishop is controlling all the dark squares. Which is why he goes bishop f6, rook b6 and rook f5. Going after the pawn on c5, bishop a3. And once again there's nothing white can do so Magnus simply played king to f7. Rook f2 and rook f3. And now after this trade he's got two massive uh, pass pawns which are defended by the bishop on c6. Which is really the hero of the game. It's really defending everything. And after king of one, bishop d4, Fabiano threw in the towel. There's simply nothing he can do against king e6, king d5, round up this pawn, and then he's simply going to push these pawns off the board. So a very, very nice victory by Magnus Carlsen, who also secures tournament victory, as unfortunately Daniel Dubov will not be able to play tomorrow. So Magnus already wins a tournament with a round to spare. Amazing victory by him. He scores plus five. I mean, technically in the tournament plus six because he's going to win the tournament. He's going to win the game tomorrow against Daniel Dubov. He also wins some rating. As he said in the interview, it could have been more, but I mean, his standards are really high at this point. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.